I am going to talk about data set scheduling in Apache Airflow. So, a brief introduction about myself. I am a senior software engineer at Astronomo. I have been using Airflow since 2021. This is my second Airflow Summit talk, right, in person. Now, moving on again, like you can, you could scan this QR code for the presentation if you want to follow along, and it has got like examples and extra details in the uh, speaker's note as well. So I guess uh, many of you guys must have attended uh, today's keynote talk for one of our customer, Taxis Ranger, and they had been using advanced dataset scheduling, which is conditional dataset scheduling for their DAX as well. So I'll be talking about that. So and if you want to schedule your DAX based on complex dataset schedule, or you want to combine that with traditional time time based triggers as well. Or if you want to maybe use API endpoints for dataset management, and or if you want to use the recent feature, which is part of 2.10, which is dataset alias, then I think you are in the right room. Now, let's say if you want to run a nightly job, and also trigger the job whenever the dataset or the data in your in your data lake right has changed, right? You could use this presentation for it, or if you want to let's say trigger your model training whenever the new data arrives instead of like traditionally scheduling it on a weekly or monthly basis you could even use that scenario as well in this talk so now i'll show you how it's done uh, now briefly just about the agenda so i'll be talk touching giving you a brief introduction of what a data set is and what is data aware scheduling and then i'll move on to complex scheduling techniques using data Conditional data set expressions and data set or schedule timetables. And then I'll uh, briefly touch upon API endpoints with respect to data set management. And finally, we'll talk about data set alias as well. Now, let's get uh, started. But before that, how many of you have used data set previously? Any source of that? Okay, hardly a couple of folks. So, but yeah, I mean, I think there was a talk yesterday as well on Airflow dataset and PubSub for dynamic DAG triggering. I would, I definitely recommend even watching the YouTube video whenever it's, it's available. But let me briefly like define what a dataset is in terms of Airflow. So in Airflow, it's more of a logical representation of data which DAG produces or DAG consumes. And how is that done? You could import that data set and essentially you can use the data any string or, or a URI to define a data set. But so just one recommendation here. So data set URIs and any extra fields are stored in a clear text in Airflow's meta database. So avoid storing any passwords or any sensitive information as part of data set URIs. Uh, now let's talk about data aware scheduling so this it has been for a while since uh, 2.4 release now if you want to let's say schedule your DAG based on update on any of your data set apart from time based schedule right uh, you could use this whole concept of data aware scheduling so this is a snippet from the airflow ui so you can see in the schedule part there's a data set triggered option as well so that is how it's represented in airflow as of now now let's talk about briefly how this actually works right so in 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 terms of airflow you have like a list of producer DAX which essentially has tasks which produces or emit a data set event right and whenever that data set event is produced right the next thing which has which uh, which is waiting for is essentially your consumer DAX which would be triggered whenever there's an update to that particular data. And if you look at this screenshot on the right side, right? So the producer in producer DAG, you can define outlets. So in this case, it's an example data. And whenever this DAG is done running, whenever this task executes completely, it would produce this example data set. And that would, and if you look at the consumer DAG below, right? There's a schedule which is defined. So basically whenever this example data set is updated right there, there will be a data set event right and this consumer DAG would get triggered another inter interesting part which is added as part of plot 9 and, and further right 
is the use of logical operators for complex triggering using data sets. So we have added and and operator, right? So what this does is that DAG is triggered when all of the specified data set is meet. So in this case, basically this DAG would schedule when this data set one and data set one two both are updated. Similarly, in case of or, right? So DAG is triggered when any of the specified data set is updated. So in this case, if let's say data set one or data set two, if any of these are updated, it would essentially trigger this, this particular DAG. And this allows you to uh, basically fine tune the triggering even in in case of data sets, right? In realistic scenario. Now, in this example, you can see it's more of a complex nested, nested data set structure, right? So what does this actually mean? So you could trigger this particular DAG whenever either data set one or data set two is updated or either of data set three or data set four is updated. And you could build a really complex structure with this as well. And just a catch there, uh, you might need to uh, use uh, small brackets uh, for conditional data set scheduling. Now, this data set expression actually translates to uh, this uh, data set expression in Airflow UI. So here, all so basically, and operation right is corresponding to all and or operation is corresponding to any. Now moving on, so there's again another interesting use case, right? You'd want to like trigger your DAGs based on a traditional time schedule, right? Which is for example, a cron job time schedule. And you'd want to also trigger the DAG whenever there is a data set event, right? So in such scenarios, we have introduced data set or time schedule as a specialized timetable. And what it allows is scheduling the DAG based on time based schedules as well as the data set event as well. So in this example, which I have highlighted, right? So this particular DAG would run every night on midnight based on the con schedule, as well as whenever both data set three and data set four is updated. Now let's talk about API endpoints. So I have added a link to the API endpoints in the, in, in the slide itself. But broadly, uh, you could use this API endpoint to do varieties of functionality with respect to data asset management. And this endpoint provide you the capability to manage and interact the data sets that are, that triggers a DAG on the data set updates. So these APIs can be bunched in terms of, let's say, listing a data set. Another scenario could be getting the data set detail, managing the data set queued event, and resetting the data set state as well. Now, why am I talking about all this? I'll give you an example afterwards. Now, let me give you a, a realistic scenario. We have got, let's assume that we have produced state, we have two DAGs with our producer DAGs here. Produce data set one, which produces data set one, and produce data set two, which produces data set two. <coughs> and we have ETL pipeline, which depends on both data set one and data set two. So it's a, and, and condition you can assume for now, right? Now, uh, let me give, let's try to run this DAX over a period of three days, right? So let's assume produce data set one runs at 7 a.m. in the morning, producing data set one, and produce data set two uh, has a schedule to run at 9 a.m. on the morning, produce, I mean, creating data set two. Because and condition is met, so it would run the ETL pipeline. But on the second day, let's say, produce data set one failed and it did not produce any data set uh, one at all. But produce data set two ran successfully and it created data set two. But on the second day, you can see ETL pipeline would not run because uh, data set one has not been produced as of now. But on the third day, now when let's say on at 7 a.m. when produce data set one ran successfully, it produces data set one. But because it's an AND condition, it would essentially trigger ETL pipeline again, but this is an out of sync execution, right? And this is not correct at all. And how do we deal with this, right? So one way to like take care of such scenario would be basically removing 
the, the data set event which has occurred on the second day by produce data set one. And in this scenario, if like if, if you remove the remove the produce data set two data set event, this would fix the out of sync scenario. And how do we do that? One of the way could be to utilize the API which we which I just talked about. So you could use API endpoint to delete the data set event for a particular DAG using a DAG ID and the data set ID as well. And this is one way to fix it. But again, like this option is not currently there in the UI, Airflow UI to delete it. And I'll also try to demo about this at the end of the talk. Now, let's talk about a new concept which has been introduced as part of 2.10, which is data set alias. So data set alias is essentially object, which, is, which can be associated with multiple data sets and it can be used to schedule the DAGs on those data sets which are created on runtime. This whole topic can be a specific talk as well. I won't be diving deep, but I will definitely do a demo on this. And how do we like basically use this in terms of code? I have, let me walk you through. So if you look at the producer DAG here, you have, you can define a data set alias, which is a unique, again, URI, right? And you can associate different data sets with, those, with that particular alias. And in the consumer DAG, you could add a schedule as a data set alias of that particular name. And whenever there's an update in any of the data set in that particular data set alias, uh, right, it would trigger this uh, particular DAG, consumer DAG as well. Now, let me walk you through this example here. Uh, so this is the same scenario. This is produce data set one, which produces data set one. Produce data set two produces data set two, and you have ETL pipeline. And you, I am using a data set or time schedule timetable, and it uses data set one and two, and there's a cron job schedule as well. Now, if you look at the graph dependency, this is how it would look, right? And I'm using these locally for this. This is the same code which I'm running, which I showed you right now. And now, if you run produce one, it would actually produce data set one, but if you look at it here, zero of two DAG has been updated, so it wouldn't trigger ETL pipeline at all. But when produce two has run successfully, both the data set has been updated, and in this scenario, you can see a DAG run here. Now the interesting bit is, if you click at the event, you can see this DAG run is being created by the data set. But let's say if I were to create a data set event manually using an API call, right? So you could click on that and Airflow UI enable, like allows you to create a data set event. So now we created a data set event. So it shows one of two data sets has been updated and I'm manually triggering a uh, data set one in this case. So once this finishes execution, you will, you would see ETL pipeline running again. And, but this time you can see that this was created by data set event. But by an API code, right? Yeah, so I think that's uh, briefly the demo I wanted to show. And yeah, that was briefly the major concepts around it. Now let's talk about best practices and tips uh, for data set with respect to data we're dealing, right? So one of the important aspect is, let's say one without data set, data, conditional data set scheduling, right? One could basically pull whenever there is an update on the data, right? When they figure out there's an update on the data, it means user would have to continuously pull for any of the scenario. But in, in such scenarios, you could use data, conditional data set scheduling. And uh, one has to definitely like take care of this out of uh, sync scenarios, which I just mentioned. And there can be various uh, ways you can reach to that state, right? And being proactive more about it and and deleting those scenarios or finding a workaround around it can be useful. And again, time data set or time schedule timetable is quite useful for flexibility in terms of in terms of scheduling the DAX. Now, if you are interested in how this feature was implemented, you could maybe grab a picture of the PR numbers, right? But yeah, that's mostly it.